Today on Toy Domination is our inaugural special guest show. This is where we take other action figure collectors, people are interested in actually playing with their toys, whether it be through photos, whether through dios, whether it actually is playing with them, or in this case, building an action figure comic book. I'm Joe. No, you're not. You're dumb, but I'm Joe. Ah, uh, There's a lot of Joes today because our special <laughs> guest is Joey uh, Adams. Joey, hey, Joey. Uh, Hello. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do a lightning round first of getting to know who you are, okay? Okay. The most recent action figure you've bought? I bought a Jurassic Park uh, with the, the, the dinosaur went... Okay. Oh, no, actually... I take that back. I just got it in the mail. <laughs> we all suffer uh, that problem. <laughs> I I got the whole series of the call it Jurassic Clash now, I believe. Uh, or is it Final okay. Clash is what it called? I don't I don't remember now off the top of my head. Names aren't important. Uh favorite toy influencer. It would have to be Star Wars. Favorite toy reviewer. Probably you guys. You I, I, I <laughs> Oh my God. Joe, you passed the test and we'll continue the show. I just finished watching all your guys' uh, bat figs because I've been thinking about jumping in because uh, back in the day I did have all of them and I don't have it anymore, but the new stuff looks really cool and more, um, especially the uh, clay. Oh, the new stuff's awesome, but it's also hard to get now. And the prices will be tough to jump in now. Favorite action figure line? Oh, Dino Riders by far. Whoa. <laughs> That's a weird pull. I like it, it a lot. Dino Riders. We got Battle Beast, G.I. Joe. Oh, the Kenner line of uh, aliens. Current action figure you wish you had. Any new I, uh, new uh, core uh, figures that would... They're supposedly coming out this month, but I'm like... Most memorable action figure game you played as a kid. I used to build my own dioramas out of cardboard i would like set them up like in a spaceship and then i would drop it and then i would go through and like go slow motion of how all the figures fell <laughs> that's like more advanced than whatever i did i just had two dudes on a on a swing out in the playground that's awesome what have you brought to play with us today tell us a little bit about what it is uh that you do all right so what i do is i make a comic book that's based off the lenard's action line 99 percent of the whole thing is just lenard figures because i well i've been tolling around an idea of doing a oh a web comic mm -hmm. um well i'm not a good artist but i'm i'm a decent writer uh, uh but i'm not a bad photographer it's what i went to school for i wanted to combine all of those and and i was also taking influence from like um toy fair magazine from back in it yes oh and, yeah uh, that's yes. crazy another reason why i chose the core is that nobody knows their storyline like yeah. you know <laughs> yes yes so yeah i was gonna ask why not why not gi joe started with the core because well the the price was right basically yeah and uh I, I started buying them at an, a place called Ollie Outlet where I could get two figures for uh, for a dollar ninety nine, and I was like, you can't pass that up. Long time ago, when Tom and I were grabbing a bunch of GI Joes, we would like you know garage sales and just get mm -hmm. a giant box of them, like before you know people knew what they were worth, really kind of thing. And then it came with a comic that was very very confusing. So I wanted to elaborate that, and then influence the the, the storyline with the new toy lines ever coming out hmm. next well, year lenard's going to be using you to write their comics <laughs> rewind a little bit so i was at a, a walmart and i saw a figure where he was riding a uh, a raptor and i was like oh my gosh this is totally uh dino riders i think it was like 9.95 for the figure and and there's the dinosaur doesn't move the only thing that moves on it and it's his mouth and i'm like uh, I can't I, I really can't drop like fifty dollars right now on on this toy line. I'm like, but if I started a comic book and they get and they notice me, maybe they'll sponsor me and send me uh, their new toy line. There you go. <laughs> have you have you tried reaching out to them at all? No, well I've I I've put my stuff out there and tagged them and all and mm. and all social media stuff and uh I haven't heard anything yet, but it's all right. It's more a hobby right now than anything. One of the things that that really um, captured from your comic was the the lighting effect. Like you talk about your photography background. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought that up. But like, it's always crisp and the figures just pop out there too. So the lighting is just these little pucks that has um, 
nine different color settings. What I do is I have um I have this uh, sticky tack stuff. Yeah, it's like yeah, a, yeah. Um, or whatever. And I use I just stick that on the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> always in reach. Yeah, <laughs> stick that on the top of my uh wherever my lighting is. Yeah, or where I need the lighting to be. And then I'll move it around. I'll take a, a couple shots and see how the the lighting looks. Because there's one really cool one that I did that the background is green, but the character himself is so far out of the box that you, uh, for the depth of field that he's got a normal color or uh, normal lighting on him. And it, there's also good depth of field, and that's hard to do with figures. That's why I went, wanted to go with uh, three uh, three and a half inch figures because. Mm. If you have a decent macro lens, then you're going to get a nice depth of field. And a lot of times in the comics, that's what's missing, is that that like that blurry background. Yeah. And then you've got a custom figure in that uh, bottom yeah. left panel. They're explaining that Snake is a uh, a custom core uh, mercenary, and then uh, that he's a <laughs> one of a kind because I made him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a synopsis. Mm -hmm. What is your overall story here? I know you said you talk about the actual toy line, you kind of integrate it, but what is the story? This toy line is about the uh, time crisis. The core blows up the the dark uh, matter, and it causes a chain reaction, opening up uh, the Jurassic period, uh, World War II, and, and and present day. So the curse are trying to do, basically they were and plagued by this nanobot wanting to take over the world because mankind is just going to ruin it. The core are the first responders. Like they go in, uh, no questions asked to stop uh, the curse. The beginning of the comic, that is what I, I took a bunch of twisty ties and spray painted them uh, uh, red. And I put them in a clear tube, um, like a tube lighting in. They, they blow that up. And so... They get sent. the The core timeline is in the future. I didn't de devil with the other two storylines because, well, it's almost impossible because the uh, World War II stuff came out in Europe, but not in the United States. Mm -hmm. The actual yeah. toy line. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. And so the cursed has them in this um, this scenario where they're trying to make the core members go insane by putting them in terrible situations. Uh, and that's okay. when I took their toy line of the Alien franchise and tied it into that computer program. So those aren't actually xenomorphs. They're more of like a simulation come to life just to mess with them. I am always intimidated by doing anything with timelines, right? Because like you saw how bad the X-Men movies went on, off the rails, right? So What do you mean uh, they're perfect? Yeah, <laughs> but I, I think it's clever that you went ahead and opened up the aperture because now you can, whatever line that the core goes, you're like, well, I already, they just reach into this time dimension and pull them out. Like, so that gives you a lot of bandwidth to be able to pull their, whatever direction they go into, into your stories. Let me, hmm, how do I ask this? <laughs> so I've noticed a lack of page numbering. <laughs> that, that would help a little bit because like on Instagram, it's hard to see where... Do you have covers? Because I didn't see any when I was scanning through it. Um, I, I do on covers. on webtoons. I I made. Uh, oh, okay. So you have like a website where you can like read it from Not start yet. to finish. Not yet. Oh, okay. I, I'm 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 in the process of doing that. No. Oh, okay. Cool. I got the next 15 pages of the next issue. I was going to do a five five issue uh, storyline of 25 pages each. I was thinking about putting it on a back burner because I've been really really impressed with people's. Um, dioramas that oh, like, yeah. uh, like uh empire toys yeah oh yeah like, well, yes, yes, yes. Mind yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 if you have something like that and you are um taking pictures of it right and then you start throwing it in and making a comic book and making it a storyline you forget that they're figures yeah because yeah, the yeah. background is so all and taking like mm -hmm. very immersive my, background, my backgrounds that i've been using are just like um it's packaging from um, old ceiling fans. But you know what, though? To give yourself some credit, in a video of how sci-fi movies make greebles or prop effects, one movie took went to Burger King and bought all those clamshell styrofoam things they used to have, and they glued yeah. it all around. So when they're walking through the hallway, it looks futuristic and like insulated like you would have in a capsule, but it's mm -hmm. all Burger King wrappers. And when I saw... This picture right here, for example, in the background, especially like you, Joe was bringing out the depth. Yeah, you... the depth of field lends itself to your backgrounds not being super yeah. detailed because you 
mm-hmm. not always in focus with the backgrounds. That being right. said, some yeah, of them are. I, I, I really like how the 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 pattern of, of like just mm-hmm. the roughness just gives you the idea that there there's something somewhere mm-hmm. like sci-fi. I also suffer from the self consciousness of like comparing to something better, right? Like yeah. Empire Tour Works is probably uh, one. Yeah. Of, there's other station types who make their things, and one of them quoted him as the godfather of those. And I was oh, like, yeah, yeah abs- absolutely. Like I got into woodwork with toys because of him. Mm-hmm. It's very hard for me not to compare my stuff to his and be like, well, yeah. this is trash and just smash it. <laughs> but I think what resonates with fans is that one, you're doing something and you're putting it out there. Two, it looks like it's fun. And the quality of that props or whatever you're using, like you use mm-hmm. Play-Doh and some for some of the effects in there. Yeah. My eye does catch that like Play-Doh, but what you're able to do with it to capture mm-hmm. in the story makes it immersive and it adds verisimilitude. Uh, one of the things that stands out to me about your work is that you didn't wait around until you had perfect dioramas to start doing it, man. You just did yes. it. And yes. that's, I think that's the hardest part. You got a lot of pages done already, so it's like you seem like you're pretty far on your way to getting your five issue the goal done, you know, kind oh, of yeah. thing, so... Yeah. good job man you know so it's just for that i mean like so like that stuff that detailed back stuff like backdrops and stuff yeah you'll get there i'm glad you said there was more pages already built because one of my stinger notes here was like hey i'm a big fan and i read it but i've noticed that hasn't had any new pages in a while there yeah. so so here's what happened uh my son <laughs> what had happened walking. was yeah, my son started walking, so now I'm like, no, my, no, my no, alert is no, uh... no, no. Milestones be damned. I need some free action figure comics. But once they start moving, you gotta hide all the small things that can stick in their mouths. <laughs> when you got when you were doing your um, your early videos, I started playing. Like that's another reason is that I, I've been misplacing some of my figures because me and my son have been playing with oh yeah. Them. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 if you watch our what you got i'm yeah. constantly like i know there's a visor and a gun I know somewhere I've got but we're <laughs> playing with it and i don't know here here's yeah. a half a figure for someone who's thinking about jumping into this what what's something you would tell them research your um your programs that to make comics like i use a program called comic life i use comic life instead of photoshop because it was so much easier you can give your captions shadows you have full uh, customization of all your radi- gradients and and all you got to do is click and drag the picture into the panel and then you move the picture uh, into the panel where you want is it it's, to. so it's like customizable but it's simplified and it's like really yeah. easy okay. yeah i know there's another program where they use the different speech bubbles but just keep it simple when you're making a comic go go for it but don't like, don't get crazy. Mm. Don't make it like look like ice sickles, you know? It, right. <laughs> because yeah. it takes you out of it. The word bubbles are something that's your eyes supposed to move past beyond. Yeah, exactly. Know? Where can people find your stuff? Um, you can find it on Instagram. So, my username is Captain Crabgrass. Uh, that's my very first comic book idea. If you find <laughs> the word Captain Crabgrass, you're going to find my comic. And then also you can check it out on Webtoons. What's it called on Webtoons? Oh, Joe. it's called The Core Elite. Oh, yeah, I found it right away. This looks really cool on Webtoons, though. I will say that. I used to do a um, Star Wars spoof on on my MySpace account back in the day. Ooh, nice. wow. I ended up printing it. I made three different copies, but I made... Uh, a 300 page graphic novel out of that those storylines and one of them ended up in the um the netherlands in an art gallery nice <laughs> that's awesome good yeah. job so the last thing i would say is that and i it's tricky because you're doing a, a toy comic book but i want to do some sort of collaboration and this is kind of like a circle back an episode so like whenever we come back and have you back on again Mm-hmm. Uh, we can follow up with a collaboration on there. We'll do that. Maybe we'll do a, like, maybe Joe and I can do a guest uh, page or something like that, too. Like, if you kind of kind of box us into a frame, you know how, like, on TV shows, there's different directors or guest writers that kind of do, like, a, you know, a signal up, something like that. Yeah. If you were willing to do that, like, yeah, Joe and I could probably do it. It may take us a while to get there. Uh, and I don't have very many core figures at all, but, uh, but we can figure something out. We, hey, I know you got a ton of Joy Toy. I have a we ton do, of we'll, joy toy. We could do a one-page thing where the core randomly show up 
in like Dom's toy collection <laughs> yeah. for like, <laughs> and it then like, back. it's like a it's like a multiverse instead of a timeline. Like yeah. you jump in, yeah. like why are we? Oh my god, articulation is so much different. Yeah, <laughs> this always so Joey, you may suffer through several takes of this. I, <laughs> I, am Dom's really terrible. good. At, I am Dom's really good at messing this up. <laughs> I, uh, there's so many inputs and beats you have to hit, and they change each time. And I'm just like where are we right now and joe's like you're on you're what are you doing so all right all right here we go okay let's uh, there we go all right if you enjoyed this content and want to see more toy domination videos go ahead and click the links that are going to pop up on this screen i've been dom i'm joe and i'm joey thanks for coming out and playing with us today hey not a problem thanks for having me